Hello, and welcome back to my ISS Vanguard strategy campaign playthrough. Uh, this is episode three. When we last left off, we had just completed the ship book phase after exploring the Dyson Sphere at the Eye of the World, and now we're going to check out the planet of Pellucid following the Builder's Map. So let's take a look at the game board. Um, got everything set up for the most part. Uh, just a couple of things to do before we get into the log entry. Again, reminder, we are we have our lander card. Uh, we fully scanned, so we got information about Pellucid. We know that for the landing, we're going to want armor. It's also saying frequent checks using combat and gathering. Uh, and the biomes, ruins, and the void. And finally, danger. Uh, there will be additional tests for defense and scouting and prepare for danger A die rolls. So with all that information, we've made what choices we have, which, to be honest, were not a lot. We, we kind of did, we did take this into account with choosing our crew. Um, as far as equipment goes, uh, not a lot of options. Already went over that last time. And the one other thing is I went through the decks for engineering. Um, the four cards, there's 14 cards available, rank one for each section. For engineering, the four other cards all have to do with mission equipment. We don't have any of that yet, so I just went straight up with the 10 uh, basic ones that are marked for the white bar. Uh, same for security. The other four cards mostly have to do with threats. Um, so having not encountered any of that yet, we'll wait until we have a better idea what that might look at. As for science, uh, I did rotate in uh, several of the cards, of the additional cards, being able to manipulate I've been able to manipulate the lead tokens on the discovery decks to make sure we get maximize our ability to get discoveries. Uh, seems quite worthwhile. Uh, we'll just kind of run through the cards I did not take or took out of, out of the deck because I had to. I feel like you know I could have just put in all fourteen, but any as in almost any game with a deck. Ideally, you want to optimize, increase your chances as if you of drawing the better cards in your deck or the ones that are going to be more useful. So I'm going to trim down to 10 for now. Uh, I removed both of the cards to let you re-roll a red die. Um, Science only has one red die, and he could use those when assisting others, but uh, these seem the easiest ones to cut. So they're out. Uh, again, just having to make some cuts, I took out one of the Stroke of Inspiration to re-roll a blue die, and last but not least, this is one of the upgraded, this is not upgraded, but this is one of the, never mind, this is one of the basic cards. Um, recompiling work, move one lead token from any discovery deck to any other deck. Um, I decided to just go with one of those in the deck, thought that was enough, so those were the four I took out from Science. And then the four I took out from Recon, again, um, took out both reroll reds and both reroll blues. Uh, so I have fewer rerolls, but I have, with four characters, I have a lot more ability to assist. So depending on who's going with who, I'll just keep that in mind, make sure, you know, if I have to roll some extra dice... I'll do that, but those were the choices I ended up making, and now we are ready to proceed to the landing. Okay, so the first step of the landing is to check our lander card, and we are going to go to briefing 315. Let's go ahead, pop open the app. Let's see what they have to say. Vanguard, this is the away team. We are en route to the designated landing zone. All systems nominal. Uplink stable. Great. No problem. We should be past the outer layer of debris right about... Oh, wow. Huh? My god. You seeing this, Vanguard? Crystal clear, away team. It seems like the long-range scans were right. The planet is gone. If you see no clear approach vector, you have permission to abort. No, some pieces of the crust look large enough for a touchdown. And we detect anomalous structures among the debris. 
We could take a look. Anything you bring back will be invaluable, away team. Just don't bite off more than you can chew. There are plenty of other worlds on our list. Copy that, Vanguard. Plotting the landing path. Okay. And here we go. All right, so uh, again, a uh, place on the track. I've put it, the uh, token on the S track. So with the basic lander, we're going to need to get through one, two, three steps. Uh, maybe if we get lucky, fewer than that. But let's go back to the app and check the process. All right, so we have to roll the danger die. All right, so that is going to be a one, or a single symbol, which is debris impact. Sounds lovely. Uh, hope we have enough shields to deal with that. Ah, expose the cargo bay. So we have two choices. We can either expose the cargo bay, lose four supplies reduced by shields. Uh, we do actually are in good position to deal with that. We have the base two of the lander, and because we paid attention to our scan results, uh, we have plus two, so we actually have four shields, which means we are not going to have to lose any supplies. The other option is every crew member gains a wounded injury. I think we'll expose the cargo bay. Uh, our lander can take it. So we don't lose any supplies. We get to advance the track one step. So great, just two to go. We haven't reached there yet. All right, here we go again, rolling the danger die. Oh, we got a one again, and... I'll click through the process just so you can see, but it's uh, it's the same. Things don't change here. Again, these are there are plenty of elements where you won't necessarily branching paths in the app. You won't necessarily know where things go. But during the landing, at least at least for one like this, it's pretty straightforward. So again, we just expose the cargo bay. Again, we don't have to lose any supplies. We progress the landing track, and now we. Have not reached it yet, so we just have to do it one more time. Uh, so let us go back to the danger die, rolling again. Okay, this time we got something different. Let's see. Um, that is other. Continue. Progress the landing track one space to the right. Uh, has it reached it? Yes, it has. All right, so we have arrived safely at your destination. This is a good opportunity if you're using the app, something that's really easy to miss. So important, this planet introduces leads and discoveries, yada, yada, yada. I'll explain that as we go if it's new to you. Note the bar on the right, uh, the scroll bar. So there is more here. It's very easy to just take close to not, to not realize there's more information in the app. Um, in the case of here, it's, you know, it's telling you what you need to do. Sometimes you might miss adding a research project, uh, putting a certain card in play. So just be careful as you're going through with the app to make sure that you're actually scrolling through and taking a look at everything. Actually, in the campaign, the other campaign I'm playing, I'm actually using both the app and the logbook um, just to check things off and make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, the app's pretty good, but again, it's, it is pretty easy to miss stuff. So if you really want to be thorough, uh, you can do both. There are other advantages to using the logbook. Uh, and again, you'd want to use it in addition because the app is going to be current. It's going to be up to date. Any errata changes are going to be in the app logbook. Definitely not the printed one, not really worth going out and printing an updated version. So if you do use the logbook, I'd recommend using them together. All right, so let's uh, let's proceed on and open up the Pellucid, and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we've landed on the planet, there are a few things we need to go through. First and foremost, we need to get a rank up card. So we're going to take the deck of rank up cards that haven't been solved yet, shuffle them up, and deal out two, and then we will choose which one now that we have a chance to get a look at the planet. So let's see what options we've got for our rank up. This could be pretty pivotal early on. So we have, let's see, first option, flip this card if you have at least four supplies on your lander board. Uh, that is 
going to be very tricky. Uh, we only start with six. Only you, we can get two more. So, uh, all right, that's worth considering. Uh, all right, the second one, flip this card if you have at least what, three or five. If you have at least five discovery cards on your lander board. All right, well, that is quite a bit, but um, they're just looking, there are two unique discoveries, so it's just a matter of picking up three more discoveries during, and if I'm taking another look at the game board, actually, let's take a closer look, oops, at some of the areas here. All right, we... We do have ways of gaining alien tech leads. Um, we don't, th we, and there, there's areas we haven't explored yet. Presumably, we're going to have multiple opportunities to get discoveries. We do have uh, some science abilities that able to enable us to get leads if we use tokens. Uh, we have one of our crew members can get can get discoveries with only value of two. So I feel like that is going to be our best bet. So again, I think here we're going to go for this option to get five discoveries. This early in the game, only having six dice, I don't think I want to mess around with supplies too much. Uh, and I'm not even sure I want to use the uh, the lander mod that lets us spend charges because of one downside when playing with four characters is they all have to lose a charge. So we're actually giving up quite a bit in order to get those supplies. So, all right, so we've got our rank up. Uh, I'm just gonna put it up here instead of on the lander board. Good enough, we need five discoveries. Uh, it's really something we wanna go for anyway. We don't wanna waste this opportunity. You wanna kind of try and get a jump start on the game if we can, so we can start doing research. All right, so we've done that. Uh, next, we're gonna draw two section cards for each player. I'm just going to put everything down here for now. Um, if we get any injuries, we'll shuffle things around and figure out where to put items. All right, so we've drawn all the cards. Um, we do have to decide who's going to go first. Uh, and then we also need to find out a little bit about our crew and the planet before we get too far. So let's actually read up on Pellucid. Uh, an Earth-sized planet on the border of the habitable zone with an elongated orbit. It gave life to an early space-age civilization. Unfortunately, it was all but wiped away by when a strange crystalline structure shattered the planet to pieces. So as I said, there's two unique discoveries available um tells you to put them in order from bottom to top so two on the bottom three on top occasionally that could have some meaning uh, as for our mission among the ashes this broken world offers few surviving landmarks but a large cluster of potentially interesting structures stands not far from the landing zone we must comb this area inch by inch and our goal is we have to fully explore the sector with the V symbol. A uh, uh, special symbol. I'm not sure what that means. But that's up here, so we're going to have to get all the way up top, fully explore it. Uh, when you fill the objective, we'll be asked to discard this mission. mission. And then last, we've got the... Uh, we've got the printed... Global condition, uh, which can slot in right here. Crystalline shards. So there's a, an extra action here or that we can spend dice on during dice checks. We can spend a gathering symbol to gain a mineral lead. Great. So that is definitely, uh, I had forgotten about that. There are definitely going to be means to get discoveries as long as we have time here. Uh, and then you've got a time track here. When that runs out, uh, something's going to happen. And... From a travel standpoint, uh, we just spend a die or roll on the A table. Okay. Uh, so let's find out a little bit more about who is going on this mission, and then we'll decide who should take the lead and go first. We've got Monica Davis 
from who we just recently installed into recon. For Monica, healing comes naturally. A young but promising doctor back home, she left behind a large and close-knit family to serve aboard the Vanguard and has no illusions about ever seeing them again. Eager to make friends, she hopes to gather a found family around herself. Well, after getting through that landing, which turned out to not be that hairy, thanks to the very good shields they have, she's already starting to form a bond, I imagine, with these particular three crew members. Uh, she has the ability I was talking about before, spend a charge to gain a discovery from a deck with a lead token of a total value of two. And she's got the convert symbol for gathering, so she stands to be a rock star in this mission. Uh, from security, we have Camille Najjar. Everyone knows that Camille is a coffee addict, and it's wise to avoid him when he hasn't had his morning brew yet. However, it is also known that, for some strange reason, away teams with Camille on board have suffered no casualties thus far. Uh, also, it's... Well, I hope that's uh, telling us about the future, that uh, since, as far as I can tell, this is his first away mission, so hopefully that... that comes to uh, fruition that nobody suffers any casualty. I already feel like uh, we got a good team getting going here. Let's see what Nicholas Green brings to the table. Uh, in the science section, a loyal and driven soldier. Hmm, well, Nicholas jumped at the chance to test a bleeding edge power armor in his early 20s. Eager to prove himself and make a difference, Nicholas logged more missions than any other trooper in his unit, but the side effects of his power armor's neural link were unmistakable. The link between Nicholas and his armor can never be severed, but he's found new purpose aboard Vanguard, where his strength and tenacity can be a boon. So the really interesting thing I think uh, Nicholas has got to be wondering is what the heck is he doing in the science section? You know, you'd think maybe, certainly security is what he would have expected. If not that, then engineering. Um, but somebody... Somebody sees something in him that they decided to put him here. Maybe we'll find out more about it. But I think at the moment, Nicholas is as confused as you are. And he may not be able to resist some of those instincts to be the security. Finally, we've got Boris uh, Walzak. And he is in engineering. Uh, Boris was a talented physics postgrad who worked with a European space agency team to describe Vanguard's mysterious drive with mathematical equations. They failed, but as a result, Boris is one of the few people in existence to know anything about the inner workings of the Vanguard's core. Other crew members know him as something else, though, for them. He is a man who somehow reconciles his scientific approach with his love for natural remedies he prepares in a small hydroponic herbal garden of his own design. I think it's just one more reason that we were able to put uh, Zyma back to sleep twice. Um, well, it makes sense, given uh, his understanding of how the ship works, that specifically he'd be put in engineering. Um, but rather than hang out on the ship, they are sending him right to the planet's surface to put that knowledge and know how to use. So that is our crew. Uh, let's take a look at the planet board here. Um, so we're starting in the lander sector, the orbiting shard, though buried in dust and half melted, the artificial structures are clearly visible. And going through here, uh, it's got the it's got the red symbol it means we can't leave as long as that symbol is there. So we're going to have to resolve scouting the site. And there we are going to be looking for scouting symbols, gathering and combat. So. So let's see. Taking a look at our crew, I think uh, we have a couple of. Uh, well, I, I think we have we have a couple of good options as to who might be able to go first. I think we're going to start right down here with our eager uh, recon rep. Uh, so I think we've got everything in order, and we are ready to take the first turn. Okay, so there is uh, one other thing that I forgot to do, which is to divvy up the equipment. Uh, obviously, the portable AI and the jetpack are going to go in their respective sections. Uh, we're going to give our uh, we're going to give our security one of the med kits, and I just feel like Nicholas is going to get himself into trouble. So we're going to give him the med kit as well. You can divide the uh, the personal equipment up any way you want. 
Uh, you can actually also trade it among characters during, um, as long as it's one of the gray cards. They can go to any section. Obviously, the section specific have to stay with that particular crew member. All right, but now let's uh, let's get to the dice check. So I'm looking here. I'm gonna need. Uh, let's let's pop that back up again. Uh, I'm gonna need five successes in order to complete this. My entire team is here. There's no, there's, there's no reason to mess around. This also happens to be perfect for, um, for Monica. Uh, so here's what we're going to do dice-wise. Um, Monica has a conversion ability for one of the symbols we need for a success, so we're definitely going to roll that. She's also got combat, which we need, and she's got a die for... Uh, for scouting, and again, you know, it it helps to keep track of the odds here. Uh, on a on a die with a symbol like this, you've got basically three of the sides are going to have that symbol. One's got a vanguard, so it's right off the bat that's a four and six success. Then you've got the conversion icon, which in her case is also a success. And then of course, all these dice have the one accident result, uh, which would not be a success, which would be bad. Uh, on the on the basic dice, it's going to have four basic symbols. Again, these are all good. Uh, she can use that conversion ability as many times as she wants. And then you got the Vanguard. So five and six success on that die. And then it's a four and six success on this die. So that's a good start with those three. Every other crew member there can also loan a die to the check. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, from Camille in security is going to loan his... Uh, combat die. Uh, Nicholas is going to loan his basic red die. Uh, he doesn't have a red conversion die, so why not? Same thing with Boris, also going to loan a red die. So I'm rolling six dice, five of which have a five and six shot of chance. Not to mention, I can play up to five cards because uh, Monica's got two, and then everybody else who's there and can assist can play at least one card. So why mess around? Take multiple... Uh, you know, we are going to have to run through supplies, so if you can finish an action on one go and you feel like you can do it comfortably, uh, it's worth taking the shot. So let's start with Monica's dice. All right, that uh, is not the best roll, but uh, there are some things we can do about it. So again, only uh, one success there so far. Now we're going to roll... Uh... <laughs> Camille is not helping much. Let's see what Nicholas has to offer. Okay, there we go. Uh, Nicholas uh, definitely helping out. Boris's contribution. All right, also helping. So now let's look at where we're at. We have... Uh, let's slide these up. I try and remember who gets which die. Uh, currently, we have three successes. Uh, we would have three accidents, uh, which three accidents would not automatically make this fail, but uh, we wouldn't be done yet. So we'd like to get through this. As I said, we have plenty of cards. So the question now is, who is going to spend what? Um... All right, taking a look over, everybody has a card they could play to help out. I think Camille's ability, right, he could spend a charge to draw extra cards when he refreshes. So we'll have him play Catch a Breath, which is going to let me reroll a red card. I'm just going to slide this here for now. And so let's reroll. And again, it could be any die, so... Um, we want to go with one of the ones that is going to give us a five and six chance of success. So we'll just go with uh, we'll go with the combat die. All right, there we go, combat symbol. So now we're up to four. A um, couple different ways we can do this. I think just because I can. Uh, it's a good opportunity. Actually, you know what we're going to... I was going to say I could play Acrobatics, right? Which um, move one die from the roll pool to their owner's spent pool to turn one other into the basic result. Uh, that would get it done for us. 
uh, guaranteed. But I kind of want to hold on to this because Monica's got that conversion ability to do gathering, which is going to be helpful throughout the game. So I think I'm going to hold on to that. And instead, she's just going to play her respite to re-roll a die of any color. Uh, we'll slide that under there. And she will also re-roll the other combat die that came up as an accident. All right, there we got another combat result. So now we have one, two, three, four, five successes. Okay, so I've marked uh, that we've successfully completed the green track. And then we resolve any of accidents, so we advance the bottom track one. Uh, all dice are going to go to the spent pool. And then we are going to resolve. Uh, this is which is to go to log 210. So let's see what we've got. Vanguard, this is away team one. My sensors are picking up some electromagnetic activity among the rubble. I'll try to reach it. Be careful, away team. This planet looks too much like a battleground. You should expect danger and... Okay, got it. It's just a small shard of some metallic magnetized casing. Nothing too exciting. We'll tune your sensors to the magnetic signature of this shard. This should help you find other similar parts. Roger that, Vanguard. Okay, so we gain an alien tech lead. Okay, so I fetched the bag. I'm going to draw one out, and it is going to be a two. All right, we're making good progress. Um, in fact, we could potentially just get that alien tech right now. Um Hold off on that on a sec. Yeah, so looking at Monica's ability, she's got two charges. I don't necessarily want to do it right away. We can use that anytime we want, even after we pull out of the league bag, but before we put it on. So for now, because um, there may be there may be some other some other deck that's harder to come by. So we'll leave our options open. We'll just throw the lead token there for now. We will go back the app and see what else is going to happen. Uh, this is just explaining how leads work. Okay, uh, then we replace the card with P110. Oop. Come in away team. We have something you really should see. Yes, Vanguard, we read you. Our AI analyzed the data you gathered while scouting these ruins. It does seem there was an advanced civilization living on the planet. However, your current area was subject to extreme temperatures, irrecoverably damaging most artifacts. Tell us something we don't know, Vanguard. The rocks here melted like butter. The point is, not far from your position, there's a cluster of underground structures, maybe shelters of some kind. If you want to find anything more than charred pieces of tech, the AI suggests you go there, but... There's always a but, isn't there? Well, our military advisors disagree with the AI. They warned us the crystal had something to do with the death of this planet, ah. and they say we should investigate one of the crystalline arms before we attempt anything else. Understood. Leave it with us, Vanguard. All right, so find mission card M23, uh, uh, which is an optional mission, uh, and here we go. Um, so I'll just read this from here. Vanguard's AI thinks the ruined shelters are our best chance of learning more about the denizens of this world. However, military advisors believe we must focus on the crystal instead. The objective is to learn more about the crystal in Sector 2 and or learn more about the people of this world in Sector 3. Uh, you know, I, I feel like, and completion, when you have unique discoveries 2 and 3, discard this mission and gain a success. Uh, well, we're all about successes because we're going to need three of them in addition to completing our rank up. Um, let me just go over the mel Melted Cityscape and we'll talk about how the crew might decide to handle this. So uh, you can see here, a civilization once bloomed here but ended abruptly by a fiery inferno. Many of the remains are covered in thick layers of ash and volcanic rock. And again, looking at here, 
doesn't lead to anything special. It's got the flag symbol, which shows that it, we are fully explored, which is handy. Um, we can gain up to three alien tech leads if we get a really successful roll on here. So we're definitely going to think about doing that. Uh, let's slot it on the board. Okay, so uh, Monica has finished her first action, and we're going to, th that was a long action, we'll do our best to try and remember that that's happening. Uh, she gets another action. Uh, we can now leave this area. I think I actually want to keep her around because, uh, you know, I, I'd love to be able to try and do this action right now with everybody here, but remember, you can only do one special action per turn, per character, so she's already done her special action. Her options now, which is not going to... She could rest. Um, actually, gets half her dice back. Her dice are really useful. Um, you know, use them or lose them on the supplies. So I think that is actually what we are going to do. She's going to take a rest. We're going to slide this down. We've got five supplies left. Again, she's got six total dice, so she gets three back. Uh, and these red ones figure to be very useful for her. She also gets to draw a card, uh, which at the end of your turn, do not draw an event card. Uh, it also allows us to progress or reduce a time track or on the global condition up to two times. That is certainly worth considering this early in the game. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and resolve the event. Uh, that is her second action, so she is done. Turn's going to pass over to Omar, but first we resolve the event. And we are looking for ruins, which we do have ruins, so the event is going to take effect. Uh, we are going to have to roll Danger Die, Danger Die C, which uh, is not fun at all but I uh, kind of wish we had just uh, not drawn an event. Although then somebody else would have had to resolve it. So what are you going to do? All right, so here we go. Uh, we got a two, which I think is good. Nothing happens. Uh, hey, we get to... If this roll has no effect, refresh all blue dice. Unfortunately, we don't have any blue dice. To refresh, so no benefit, but uh, nothing bad happened either. All right, so let's move on to Camille's turn. Now, we don't have to do this action uh, to, to get leads. Uh, we could just move on. But again, uh, our rank-up mission is to get those five discoveries, so let's do it. Meanwhile, I think while, while they're also debating on where to go next, I think Camille's first inclination as security is he wants to do what, uh, you know, he, he wants to be a good member of the section. So he's, he's kind of advising the other crew to, to, to listen to them and focus on the spires and not worry about these shelters like the AI is. Of course, um, of course, Monica wants to explore everything. So she's arguing the other side. Uh, they're all same rank. We don't really know who's in charge here. Uh, Boris still kind of feeling his way out, doesn't really want to weigh in. So they both kind of look to Nicholas. And I think, I think Camille thinks, well, Nicholas has a security and a soldier's background, but it's actually Nicholas surprises, surprises Camille. It probably surprises everybody, uh, kind of trying to embrace. He's, he's really been wrestling during this whole trip down, trying to figure out why he was put on science. And he thinks maybe it's uh, maybe it's for something like this uh, to go against those instincts, those military instincts to this is this is not a military mission. This is a mission of exploration. So he's going to side with our recon rep and say, yeah, let's let's listen to the AI and let's find out more. So they're going to go for that optional mission. Uh, Camille is surprised, but he respects the decision that he's outvoted. So that's the decision they make. And given that, when they suggest to Camille that they take a closer look uh, at finding the artifacts, he'll do his part, suggesting this is not his area of expertise, but uh, his companions assure him that they'll be able to help out. So... Um, we're going to try and do this dice check. Uh, the better result, we're going to need a gathering 
and a Xeno. So Monica is going to loan her Xeno die. And then put that over there. Monica is going to loan her Xeno die. And Boris is going to loan his mining die. Um, now there's a second that that's the that's the best result the secondary result we could just get with red red green and let me just pull this card back over so you can get a closer look at it um, so if you look so that's the first if we can do the first we're gonna get two alien tech leads then they follow the yellow arrow down gain another alien tech lead we're gonna get three alien tech leads fantastic um or if we don't manage to get the symbols we need, just red, red, blue, we'll gain one alien tech lead. Uh, not as good. If we don't manage to complete either one, then we're going to have to do the bottom result. Now, a key thing here is there's no penalty uh, for other symbols. You know, it would be listed right below the find artifacts. So an accident is not going to do anything bad here. We can't use an accident symbol to play uh, an ability like this, where you need any, any symbol, but that you can't use an accident for that but you can use an accident to pay for these um so with that in mind we want to we're going to need a blue die so i think in this case uh nicholas uh actually i think we'll, we'll just uh camille is going to go ahead and use his own blue die and then to make sure we can get that second result which is red red blue we're going to roll red die, and at this point, why not roll the Vanguard die? Um, now, an important thing, again, also, uh, when when you got a bunch of characters assisting each other, is to remember that only the main character, the one who's initiating the dice check, can use their conversion abilities. So even though we've got all these different conversion abilities, the only conversion ability we can use right now is scouting, which doesn't help us. But the Vanguard gives us a 50-50 shot of getting one of the symbols we need. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll roll those four dice. You know, I, I got a little excited when I saw the flag symbol because Nicholas can roll. Uh, whenever you make a dice check, uh, you may roll one die from your spent pool, except he's not the one who's going to be making this check. So... Um, so doesn't uh, that that equipment doesn't come into play but let's go ahead and see how we do we'll start with monica as she's trying to decipher some of this alien symbology that is not helpful uh she tried it's her first mission cut her some slack all right now for uh assistance from boris is trying to help gather what they need. Uh, yeah, he's on top of it. Gives us a vanguard symbol. And finally, we've got... Let's see what Camille, who was reluctant to do this in the first place, has gone ahead. And... All right. Uh, that is going to be a success. We have two vanguard symbols. Really, the only question now is... Do we want to do any rerolls to potentially, uh, yeah, I, I think so, uh, to potentially get another symbol. Uh, so Nicholas is going to, still assisting, and a couple of things too about assisting, uh, you can assist with one die and one card, and or one card, so either or. The person initiating the dice check, you don't have to roll any dice if if you have other ways of getting the symbol or other people owning, you can zero is a number you can roll. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind, there are definitely going to be situations uh, where you don't want to waste any dice. You, you have it in the bag or somebody else is assisting. Uh, in the case of Nicholas, he's going to go ahead and play the dodge. Uh, again, another thing to point out when you're assisting, you only use the top ability. Convert abilities can uh, at the bottom, uh, can only be used by the act, the player whose turn it is. So in this case, it's going to play a dodge. It's going to let us re-roll that green die. And bam. So now we are in a situation where 
We've got what we need for the success here. We've got an extra Vanguard. We are going to use that on the global condition. We're going to use this Vanguard as if it were a gathering, which is going to let us draw a mineral lead. And that is going to be another two. How about that? Okay. Uh, now we resolve the action, uh, move all dice to the spent pool. Uh, that vanguard was courtesy of Boris. This die is going to go over here, uh, here, here. And now we resolve it. We're going to gain three alien tech leads. So let's go back over here with a close up to take a look as we decide how we're going to resolve these. Okay. So, we have uh, one, zero, zero. Uh, interestingly now, we can put these on in any order we want. We can do, we can activate charges and effects in between. I'm pretty sure on that one, uh, if somebody knows otherwise, that you couldn't place a token, then use a charge, then place another token, let me know. Um, but... It's not strictly forbidden by the rules, and one thing I've always say when you're playing an Awakened Realms game, ISS Vanguard, or any of the others, don't infer anything. If it's, you know, Don't make up rules just because it seems like that what it should be. If, if the rules don't say you can't do it, uh, and it makes sense within, you know, the, the, the ruling on charges is you can play them at any time. So, again, I'm not positive either way. Maybe I'll look that up. But in the meantime, I uh, wasn't planning on doing that here. The order in this case doesn't really matter. Just hypothetically, if I had drawn, let's say, uh, let's say I had drawn one of the refresh symbols, um, I would want to put that on after the one so that, because as soon as I put the one on there, I'm going to get the discovery. These cards are going to go back. These are going to be discarded. If the zero were already there, it would go back to the bag and... I prefer that not to be the case. As it is, I'm just going to drop these three cards. Uh, so we'll, we'll start with the one on the Alien Discovery to clear it off. So that's a two and a one. Those are removed from the game. And we have found a functional nano dust, rare alien tech. During a planetary exploration, we can discard it to add a construction or a red plus a blue to the roll pool. Um, who knows? If we get enough tech, we may use that. Uh, I'm going to place it over here on the lander board. I'm going to drop these other two tokens on alien tech. It's going to be plus one. They're both plus one card. Uh, even though it is Camille's turn, anybody can get the card. So I'm going to have Camille take a card. This flip this or his first action. And I'm going to have Nicholas take the other card. So now everybody's full up to two again. And that was Camille's first turn. Um, he could rest, but remember, he has got he can spend charges to get extra an extra die and an extra card back. So I think it makes more sense for Camille to use his second action to move. Okay, so, and moving, I've uh, got two directions we can go. Looking at the two options, uh, if we take a look uh, at the planet book, we've got the failed shelters up here, which just requires a single tech, which he's not going to be able to help with. And down here, the crystalline filaments, which require a whole bunch of stuff that he doesn't have, but sending him down there, he's in a good position to help out. Um, so... I think that's where we'll send him. We do have to roll the danger die to move. Um, this is danger die A, no effect on a three. So Nicholas moves down to the crystalline filaments. That is the end of his turn. And we are going to drop a token on the floor and then draw an event. Uh, pro tip, by the way, uh, when I was setting up my gaming area years ago, I made a conscious decision to not get a rug or carpeting uh, for exactly this reason. The components fall off the table all the time. If you can hear them land, it makes them that much easier to find. Um, all right, so the event I drew is 
uh, quicksand, none of the symbols match, so that is just going to progress the time tracks one step. Uh, so we'll move it along here, and that is the end of Camille's turn, which brings us to Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas, who's got a specialty in science, so it makes the most sense for him to head down. Uh, I could use his charge to move. Um, however, there are more difficult paths uh, to move through. Uh, six and one half dozen, the only... And, and it's... I'll spend one charge to move, and it does not count as an action. So if I were in a situation where I needed to do extra things, I might do that. But for now, I'm just going to have uh, Nicholas move his way down uh, by rolling the danger die. That's a four. Also no effect on danger die A. We're only looking at something with a one or a two. So Nicholas is down there. Okay, so now I'm taking a closer look at Study of the Crystal. Uh, we have to uh, roll a danger die. And I'm realizing now, yeah, you got all those three symbols to get the yellow result, but that just lets you get the dice used back, uh, which, is, which is nice, but by no means, you know, what's more important is the second result, and you just need a red and a green there. So no reason to wait for anybody else. He's got the help he needs. Uh, you know, first step up is going to make sure that we can get that red and green. So and we are going to have to roll a danger die. So let's get that. And then the red die, his only red die is in the spent pool, but that's okay because Camille can loan a red die. We'll have him loan defense. Uh, again, there's no penalty for rolling an accident on this, so it's fine. I do think, however, we're going to roll... Uh, we're going to roll an extra die for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm going to roll this basic green die. Uh, for one, I have a couple of abilities. Uh, I have a respite, which I could use to to refresh any die, or with a dodge, I could discard a danger die. So if I get bad luck and I uh, and I would get wounded, I have a chance to mitigate that. Uh, it also leaves open the possibility that if I manage to roll a Vanguard system, I can use that to gain more mineral leads. So uh, that is the reasoning. Uh, let's start and see what Camille does to contribute here. All right. Uh, just a plain old basic symbol, but good enough. Uh, now rolling the dice for Nicholas. Okay, uh, good on the danger. Did not get the vanguard I was looking for. Did get what I need for the success. Um, I could re-roll. I could re-roll a green die, why not? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, because he's probably gonna, probably gonna rest soon, get cards back. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to re-roll the green Vanguard result. That gives me a 50-50 shot at... Oh, look at that. Double Vanguard. And I am almost close enough to be able to complete the full effect. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the other symbol I need. And I'm not going to do any more re-rolls to that. I'm going to count my blessings. What I am going to do is I'm going to spend this die. This is this is great, actually, opportunity to explain how another one of the rules works. I'm going to spend this die to activate the global condition, uh, which is spend, uh, spend a gathering to gain one mineral lead. Um, all right, actually, and I realize now this is not another one I'm not positive of. I know you can't split the die between two extra actions. I don't think I can activate this multiple times with one die. I think if I had multiple vanguards, I could, but I'm actually not positive. I'm going to err on the side of, of what's not as good for me, and I'm just going to take one lead, but I'll check it out, and after the fact... Uh, Actually, I'll, I'll take a look now. Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, this is in the FAQ. It's what I thought, which is uh, you have to spend the die for each effect. So if I had multiple dice with Vanguard results, then I could I could trigger this multiple times. But in this case, I spend the one die. I gain the one mineral lead. Uh, that was Nicholas's die. So uh, the question now would be, do I want to use her ability? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I'll just draw one out, and look at that. I drew a one, so I have a total of three. I have gained a mineral discovery. It is a fractal nanostructure. When unloaded during ship management, gain one success. That is so good to get early in the game. Uh, more success tokens we get. Of course, we're going to get new dice. That's just going to make everything easier. Uh, that one had a refresh, so that gets thrown back into the bag. The two gets discarded. Um, all right, now let's move on to completing uh, this, which is to spend a red and a green die. Let's make sure they go the right place. The red guy goes back to Camille. The green die goes to Nicholas. And we are going to... Gain one success, unique discovery two, and replace with card P11. All right, so we get the crystalline shard. When unloaded, uh, we're going to re research project uh, 05. So that goes on the lander board. We've got three of the five discoveries we need. Uh, then we are going to get a resupply depot. This crystalline arm extending far into space can be supplied directly from Vanguard if there we're desperate enough to order an emergency drop. I totally forgot uh, that this was part of this scenario. Uh, we can it, we have to spend a success token to do it, but we can gain three supplies. Um, so we actually certainly would have been able to do that other rank up. But again, I think we're not going to have a problem getting five discoveries. Um, so I am not sad for the decision we made. Uh, the read a slide depot is going to go here. And that was Nicholas's second action. Uh, his first action was to move there. So that is the end of his turn. Flip over and we are going to draw an event. Uh, this one has a whole mess of symbols on it. Uh, does it have void or crystalline? Amazingly, it does not. <laughs> uh, too bad, because this is a pretty nice one. Uh, faint clues, you may pay a supply to gain two leads of any type. But does not have any matching symbols for the location we're currently at. So that is just discarded. We'll advance the time track. And that is the end of his turn. Next up, we go to Boris. Okay, so Boris is going to spend a die. We'll spend a green die to move up to the failed shelters. Uh, and so looking here, uh, we do have to roll a danger die to open the shelter. And then if we can get computer, which is great, Boris, that is, does have... Uh, or, sorry, technology. Boris does have a technology die. If you remember from the ship phase, I opted not to give him a Vanguard die. I wanted to round out all the different dice. So I do have a technology die available. Uh, odds are better. It's four and six instead of three and six. Uh, that's to get the alien tech leads. And of course, if we just get a red and blue die, we can also succeed. So... Now, looking at his dice, uh, all he's got is three blue dice, uh, including this. Uh, the, he has a couple tricks up his sleeve, though, so I am also going to roll this blue basic die. Uh, and I think he can handle this all by himself. Uh, as we go here. All right, well, it's a good thing he has those tricks, because that was not... An optimal role. Um, okay. Uh, well, it's good from the danger die perspective. Uh, I think first up, we are going to play Respite to re-roll any die. And we are going to re-roll that technology die. See if we can do better. 
We did not. Um, okay. So there's a couple different ways I can go here. I do have a stroke of inspiration, would, would, which would let him roll it again. Uh, but in that case, it's still just a, it's still just a two and three shot, four and six to get that technology. I don't think I want to mess around here and take any risks. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to play stroke of inspiration and let me pop this up for you. Uh, we're going to use it for the bottom part, which is I can spend a die, uh, any die, but it cannot be an accident symbol. So I can spend this basic die. It's going to let me roll a die from my spent pool and add it to the roll pool. So I'm going to spend that from my roll pool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and it doesn't really matter for what I'm doing. I'm going to spend the gathering die. Uh, oh, that's painful. I got the gathering symbol. Uh, would love to be able to use that to get some leads, but I'm not going to be able to. Instead, that is actually just going to let me resolve the bottom effect of the planet. Because again, uh, accident does not, doesn't show anything uh, on this location that says there's a bad thing with an accident, so it can be used. I've got my red and blue die that I can spend to complete it. So I gain my rewards. Okay, so we've uh, got Unique Discovery 3, Scorched Records. Uh, when you gain this card, each crew member draws a card. Draws a card. I've gone ahead and done that. In the case of these two, they had three cards they both had to discard. Tough choice for Monica. I decided to for her to discard the hideout to prevent event. Events aren't so bad here. I do. I like the acrobatics to be able to con for the conversion, and I like Safe Path. Uh, to be able to potentially move other crew members. So we're going to take the Scorch Records. We're going to add that here. Um, gain a success. And we have completed our... No, we have not completed. We've completed the optional mission, which is learn more about the crystal in Sector 2 uh, and or the people in the world in Sector 3. When you have unique discoveries 2 and 3, discard this mission and gain a success token. So... Uh, we are now up to three success tokens, almost in range to uh, be eligible for rank up. We just need one more discovery. Uh, so that was both of Boris's actions. Uh, end his turn. We're going to draw an event. Um, all right, it is not a matching symbol so we don't have to deal with overwhelming force we just advance the time track all right that is moving along uh, and now everybody has gone which means we can choose who we want to go first all right so at this point i can choose anybody to be first uh monica would not be doing her due diligence as recon if she did not scout ahead so she's going to take the first action uh, of the round her first action is going to be to move up here you know what? she's feeling pretty brave with her safe path so she's going to get go ahead and roll uh, the danger die to move uh, that is a one, so she has to spend a die. Um, she'll keep her options open. We'll spend a green basic die. And she's going to use her second action to move again. Same thing. She's going to roll the danger die again. And it's blank, so she is going to get to sector five, no problem. And we're going to go to log 15. The scans were correct. There are several interesting sites in this sector. Okay. Um, find all three P113 cards. All right. All right, here we have found, uh, we've chosen one at random, a buried signal. This mountain of charred rubble comes alive as a beacon-like signal sounds deep beneath it. Uh, so we are going 
Interestingly, there, so there, there's two different options here. Uh, one track does not lead to the other. Uh, with enough gathering, we can gain multiple alien tech leads, or we just need to burn through five results. Again, accidents seem to work fine here. Uh, to go to log 22. Okay, so that uh, was both of her actions, uh, which means we need to draw an event for the end of her turn. All right, uh, there is a there might be a thieving creature here, but no, not in these abandoned caves. So once again, the time track is going to advance, and that will be the end of her turn. All right, having completed this optional mission, uh, Camille is eager to learn more about these spires that seem like a threat that security is concerned with. So, uh, but he is feeling a bit tired from his action so far. So his first action is going to be rest, and he is going to spend a charge to get an extra die back. So instead of three, he's going to get four, which means he'll get every die back. Um, and let me just, he's got one action left. He gets to draw an additional card, which is going to leave him with four total cards. He immediately has to discard down. <coughs> we'll keep the respite to re-roll uh, any die. And uh, I think for the other one, we'll hold on to, uh, we'll hold on to catch a breath to re-roll a red die. Uh, I thought about holding on to dodge. It's got that ability to discard a danger die, but you know, we got two med kits. I feel like we're doing okay here. Um, that was his first action. His second action is going to be to continue on towards the unknown. He's going to have to spend two dice to do this. Um, what are we going to spend? Hard to say. I think... He's got the ability to re-roll red dice, so uh, we'll just spend the blue and green and see what happens. Um, it's tough because you know all of these symbols are potentially useful here. He's actually capable of generating three of the four symbols on on the scan card between his conversion ability and these two, and I think I want to hold on to the Vanguard. Otherwise, if, if the match wasn't so perfect, I feel like I might, with going into the unknown, might want to keep my options open and hold on to one die of each color. But in this case, I'm going to hold on to all my red dice. He's going to move over here. Again, I have to spend two dice. That is not a dice check. Don't have to roll anything. Uh, I am then going to go to log 16. We're passing the ridge of solidified lava. Don't forget to gather samples. It may tell us something about the composition of the planet's core. It might be somehow related to this crystal. Wait, there's a whole field of antennae up ahead. They are humongous. Perfect place to scavenge some alien tech. Define humongous, away team. At least several times larger than our Earth's fast telescope. Diameters measured in kilometers. Kilometers. Yes, that uh, humongous, uh, not the most scientific of terms, but I'll go with it. It works. All right, uh, card P114. Let's take a look. Uh, this is an ultra-large array. This forest of enormous antennae indicates this civilization tried to communicate with someone or something. And here we can study the array uh, using a couple of abilities that he is not at all good at. But fortunately, uh, Nicholas, our security turn of science, is not far behind and will no doubt be able to help with that. Uh, so that was resting first action. Second action was to move. That is the end of his turn. Flip this over. Draw an event. Uh... You'd think on the planet, you know, full of crystalline structures, there'd be a biome icon with the crystal. 
Uh, we haven't found one yet. Oh, there is one. Yeah, all the way up there. But not down here. So once again, time passes. Very glad because this is extreme scintillation. We would have to spend a red, green, and a blue die. Hey, <laughs> remember what I was saying about uh, all things being equal? I'd hold on to one of each color. Um, yeah. Glad that that is just an advancement on the time track. Although we are running out of opportunities uh, to gain our free mineral leads. I don't know what happens when this gets replaced, but I'm assuming uh, conditions probably aren't going to be as pleasant and helpful as they are now. Uh, that being the end of his turn, we're going to go on to Nicholas. Uh, now seems like the perfect time to burn a charge before or after an action, spend one charge and roll the A die to move to a connected sector, ignoring the path icons. So by doing that, we do not have to worry about spending two dice to move. Let's see what Nicholas has in store. All right, he is going to have to spend one die to move. Uh, it's going to be this biology die. Uh, he's going to head over here. He has another action. Um, and I could have him rest. However, um, I had totally forgotten about that card. All right. So, yeah. Um, uh, one of the this is one of the cards that is not in the original ten that I was pretty excited about. I was wasn't sure whether or not to include one or both, but comparative analysis. I've never uh, in the other campaign I'm playing. Uh, my daughter is playing science and engineering appropriately enough because uh, that's what she's studying. Um, but so I've never taken a really good look at the science cards. So this was pretty exciting to see. Before or after an action, discard one charge to gain two lead tokens of any type. Uh, I'm also thinking long term, now that I know this card exists, uh, I'm glad this guy has three charges. There are characters that can have four starting charges. I see one of those, they're going in science. Uh, I don't even care whatever the other abilities are, probably. Maybe, we'll see. But I, I just love the idea of being able to use this several times. Um, yeah, and, and you look at the bottom ability, discard one lead token from any discovery deck. Uh, you know That's why we put those zeros out after the refresh, so they're just hanging out there. Uh, so, great card. Uh, we're going to hold on to this and maybe try not to, maybe at this point, save charges. Um, all right, having moved the first action, we now have a second action where we can study this array. I would definitely like to get those alien tech leads, don't have the technology symbol, um, but do have the science symbol I need. So I think I could I could rest now. I could rest now and get dice back. Let me th let me think about this for a sec because the advantage you know obviously if i'm resting now i can contribute more dice i could use my green vanguard um uh if i wait and rest after then i can get my blue dice back um You know, I do feel like we still need one more discovery. Uh, I'm going to gain two alien... Uh, no, I'm not necessarily going to gain alien tech leads for that. All right. I, I think... Oh, and I've got... All right. You know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to play comparative analysis. I'm going to use this now. I'm going to spend a charge. And... Uh, discard one charge to gain two lead tokens of any type. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just to maximize my odds, I'm going to gain the alien tech. So let's see what I got. All right. So that's two ones. Um, uh, again, I'm now in position. I could use Monica's ability to claim these. Um, you know, I'd love to get those ones back into the bag before I draw again. So I think, uh, yeah, it says any time, so I can, it doesn't have to be during her turn. So Monica is going to spend a charge 
Uh, let's get back to the game board. She had two charges. She's got one left. Uh, and we're going to take all four of these. These two zeros are going to be removed from the game. These two refresh ones are going to go back in the bag. We're going to draw this. All right. Living Bioweave. Planetary exploration. During dice check, you may place this card in the roll pool of any crew member in your sector, including yourself, to add a vanguard to the dice check. Uh, we are now up to our maximum of five. Again, that maximum is only at the end when we're taking off. So we can still put more on our lander board. If we end up with six or more, then we have a couple of ones that we can discard for an ability. Uh, rank up at the end of planetary exploration. So even though we now have five discovery cards, we don't get to flip this yet. If it said at any time, then we'd flip it now, then we could spend those discoveries for their abilities and we'd still have the rank up. But that is not, it says at the end. So uh, we gotta make sure we hold on to at least five. All right, so uh, that was all by way of setting up for, uh, you know, I, I feel, at this point, I feel less urgency. Uh, having gotten that fifth discovery, so I think, ah, you know what, I, I'm going to do the rest now anyway. Uh, so I'll draw a card, I'm going to get three dice back. One, two, three, and... Uh, again, that was his first action uh, because it did not take him an action to move here. That was uh, that was just the result of a charge. Um, the first action here was to rest. The second action is going to be to study the array. Uh, we're definitely going to go uh, for the science and then any two other, I think... Again, there's no penalty for accidents here, so he's going to roll a Vanguard, and then we're going to borrow a Vanguard from Camille. Um, so see if we can't get lucky and get the better effect here. All right, starting with Camille's assistance. There's an accident. Uh, now let's see what Nicholas can do for his part. All right. Oops. Uh, that was that was science until I picked it up. Um, so, all right. Uh, I have some rerolls. Uh, we're trying at least one. So, let's see if we can't fetch a vanguard out of this. Camille will reroll the red die. God, I am not having luck with rerolls. All right, I'm stubborn. I, I'm gonna re use this. Probably not the best idea, but I'm gonna reroll. Uh, this time we'll try the green die. Stubbornness pays off sometimes. Okay, um, so another opportunity to kind of to to show this. Um, so I've got this double vanguard, which uh, I can use to complete uh, complete this. I need a science and a tech. Uh, it leaves me with one extra symbol. I cannot split those two vanguards and say I'm going to use one to activate the global condition and one to study the array because you got to do it. Everything's in order. And first, we would spend dice uh, for abilities on cards and. The global condition, then we would go and uh, spend dice for the check. So what we're going to do is just uh, this red accident die is going to go back to Camille's spent pool, and we're going to spend we're going to spend uh, the double vanguard to study the array, which is going to get us two alien tech leads, and that is going to be a one non-refresh, and a zero refresh. Okay. Throw those on. Then we're going to gain a success and replace with P115. Okay, so we have discovered the array control room. 
The mainframe controlling this array is too large to move and extremely complex. We can decipher alien systems if we have unique discovery three, which three, which we do. We can treat any basic results as Xeno, which is what we need. We need Xeno four times to go to log 250 and any dice that don't give us the result we need are otherwise going to move along the bottom. And if that happens too often, we're going to reset the green track. Um, so that is going to be a challenge we're going to have to face, uh, but not right away. Uh, one other thing I did note that after I rested that I had forgotten to advance the supply track. Uh, this is actually, we've rested three times. Each of these characters has rested. Boris has not yet. That's about to change. Um, so, um, so we're now at three supplies remaining. We have finished Nicholas's turn, which means we draw an event card. Uh, oh, it's my favorite. Of, actually, it's, not, it's my second favorite event in the game. I think uh, my favorite is the one that lets you get mass amounts of leads. Uh, but this one, no hazards, so nothing happens at all. I do like to see that. Um, okay, that brings us to Boris's turn, uh, who... All right, I feel like I've had uh, pretty good luck so far. Well, I think we should probably rest before moving. Um, so first up, uh, I will do the supply track first. I will draw my card. And then I'm going to get three dice back. We definitely want this gathering die. Um I want my red basic die because he's going to be in a position to be able to assist uh, Monica on her turn. And then for my other die, let's see. Um, uh, the computer die has come in handy. Uh, so... The technology and again you know I, I talked about earlier about you know you get information i, I think we, well, we've used the technology die in two different checks now so uh and i haven't seen anywhere that needed the defense die so i don't know so you know sometimes uh i guess maybe that's still to come but uh so first action to rest uh, second action is going to be mo to move, and I'm down to supply down to two supplies. I think I'm gonna take the chance, roll the danger die. Ugh, it was bound to happen sooner or later. All right, so you risk it enough. Uh, Boris is stumbling and bumbling his way over to the buried signal and. Uh, he trips on some of these crystalline structures. Fortunately, doesn't tear his suit. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's he's busted up his leg a bit. Uh, we're going to have to give him an injury. Uh, he's going to be wounded. Um, so we'll just pop that over there. Uh, he is going to get an injury die, which I can put. In any of the three columns I want, uh, there's no memory in this game in terms of where you put it, right? So since every time he makes a dice check, I'm going to have to roll... Um, I'm going to have to roll that die. Uh, then when I put it back, I can put it in any column I want. Um, it's just if you were to get... If you get multiple injuries, you have to spread them. You can only have one injury die in each column. All right, so that was unfortunate. Um, and he's not even uh, with somebody who has a med kit. <laughs> we may not, in, uh, you know, in Monica's haste to uh, race off and, and explore, uh, we may not have given all of this the best thought. Maybe somebody should have handed off a med kit before they split up. They did not. Uh, that was his first action. So what are we going to do now? Um, okay. Uh, he does have one... 
Actually, I take it, but no, his first action was to rest. His second action was to move. Sorry about that. So that is the end of Boris's turn. That makes things a little easier. He's going to draw an event card. Uh, we have biomes, caves, and crystalline. There is a deep fracture here. All right, so this is interesting. We can exert a sacrifice a die, not exert, sacrifice a die to gain three mineral leads. Uh, that's fun, but we've already, we got so much more to do. We, uh, or, or I have to roll danger die A. Um, yeah, if I didn't only have six dice, if I had more supplies, I think I probably would do this, but we're at our maximum. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's worth it. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll the danger die. See what happens. Okay. I'm glad he did not get injured again. Um, all right. So now comes the question if, do I just want to beast this thing? Um, going to need five successes, which means, uh, Getting the alien tech leads is not really a big deal. Um, in fact, I don't want to do that at this point. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have Boris... I'm going to have Boris roll three dice. Sorry. It is not Boris's turn. Uh, it is the start of a new round. Um... I can, however, start with Boris if I want to try and get this done. Um, or do I want to start with Camille? All right, let me give this some thought because I might want to pass the starting player now. Okay, so I've gone through this. I've kind of thought it out. Part of me is thinking, boy, you know, I should have just gone back and taken those mineral leads uh, to open up the possibility of using those discoveries. But um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start with Nicholas. Um, and so this might seem a little weird, but let me explain my rationale. Um, I'm going to have to try and get four successes down here in the control room. He's got three dice. He can get a fourth die from Camille. Um so that's better than Camille going first because Camille only has one die that's optimal and then, uh, it, you know, he'd basically only be rolling two dice. So it makes more sense to start this with Nicholas. If he gets lucky and completes it, then when it comes around to Camille, he can head up and help out over there. Um, so, uh, so that's the way I'm looking at it. So we're going to have Nicholas take the first action so he becomes the start player uh yeah another important thing to remember is the play order does not change uh that has to stay constant constant so nicholas goes first it means he's going to be followed by boris then monica then camille then we get back to nicholas's turn and start of a new round now we can switch who's the starting player but the order is fixed throughout uh, you can't just say mix around and say who you want to go next um, so that being the case, uh, we've got Nicholas here. Uh, all right, so we just need basic successes. Um, we're going to need four of them. Any other die is not going to do any good. Uh, of course, a Vanguard will also work for us. So we've got a five and six shot on each of these dice. Uh, the one other thing I'm considering is do I want to maybe do a prepare action to get another card? Eh, we've, we've got rerolls. Uh, it's not the best with Stroke of Inspiration, but I'm not even going to be able to use that ability. Um... So do I want to prepare to draw an extra card? Um, I'd also going to want to be able to rest after this. So I think that being the case, I'm, not, I'm just going to go ahead and roll his three dice 
plus the basic die from Camille. Uh, any basic die can be can turned into uh, Xenology, which is what we need. So here we go. Okay, so far so decent. I've been getting a lot of accidents. Uh, Camille, what do you got? Help us out here. Vanguard, that's nice. Uh, so Camille is going to play Respite to give us a reroll. All right, come on. No more accidents. No more. There we go. One, two, three, four successes. Nailed it. So that is going to progress. One, two, three, four. Again, because we have Alien Tech 3, they all count as Xeno. Uh, the Zangard, Vanguard counts as Xeno. We're going to go to log... 250. Research log 18C. The study of the array revealed the creatures of this planet made a significant effort to contact other civilizations. However, once they realized they were doomed, they tried to rewire this massive complex form of a giant receiver into a giant transmitter. The message they tried to send is unfortunately impossible to recover. We can only wonder whether it was some sort of final testament, an admission of a great mistake, or a warning they hope to deliver to other civilizations. Another disconcerting find is that many terminals and devices here are designed to accommodate users of different shapes, sizes, and numbers of limbs, even though this wasn't a space-faring civilization, and even though it used a single language. We must learn more about this place to form an opinion. Okay. Gain one success, two alien tech leads, and replace with a zero, zero, zero. All right, let's see. Two alien tech leads is going to be a one with a refresh and a zero with a refresh, which, all right, gets us to a value of two. So if we really wanted to get another alien tech discovery, Monica could spend a charge, but then I would not be able to um, I would not be able to gain two more supplies which I think it's interesting you know because I was just thinking about in terms of the two extra supplies um, I am taking away abilities so for example you know Boris can spend a charge to refresh all blue dice so that's effectively three dice that's almost as good as a rest uh and it's even in some ways it's even better because um it doesn't cost an action so so you know the two supplies is going to give me two additional rests okay well then uh i'd also be taking away nicholas's ability to basically get a free movement again not an action uh, so that it saves an action and you know used if i need to move between here and here it's going to save me two dice which is almost as good as a rest um, so i'm not even sure that i necessarily want to use that i don't have to make a decision next yet uh, what i do need to do is figure out nicholas's second action um There's nothing to be done down here. Um, I think what I'm actually going to do for Nicholas is... Um, instead, of, instead of resting, uh, since I only got two of those left, um, and I just feel like he doesn't have the best symbols for here, I think in his case, at this point, I'm going to exert. So I'm going to sacrifice a die. Um, you know, part of me wants to say I haven't seen anything requiring xenology on this planet, but I know if I get rid of it, like the next check that shows up is going to require xenology. So I'm going to get rid of the green uh, basic die. Uh, nobody has a green convertibility here. So I sacrifice that, which lets me refresh five dice. Uh, and again, when you exert, note, you know, you can do it at any time. 
Um, you can do it on somebody else's turn. You can do it after an event is drawn, but before you resolve the event. Say say you have no dice. All your dice are in spent pool. The event says you have to spend a die. You don't have any, so you exert to get those dice. Then you spend one of those. Um, and the die you exert can come from anywhere. It can come from your spent pool. So that is exactly what will happen. Uh, I'm going to drop this in his section box so I don't forget. Um... Uh, again, he's only taken one action so far, so the second action is we're going to roll the danger die to move up to Sector 6. Uh, and I am going to have to spend a die for that. I, uh, I will spend the DNA die. I can always... It's still available to me if I need to get it back at some point. Uh, that was the second action. Turn finished. Let's draw an event. Okay. Uh, he is in a sector with nothing. So time passes. There is no friendly wildlife here. All right. We're one step away from getting to the end of that track. But not before Boris takes his turn. Okay, it's a little bit risky, but I'm going to have Boris roll all of his dice to try this check. Uh, the injury die may come up, and I may have to spend something, but then if that happens, I can just exert. Um, I'm going to have to do that eventually anyway. So... Uh, yeah, I could also spend charge to refresh... Mm, that wouldn't work because they wouldn't have been spent yet. Um, oh, yeah, which means the exerting is actually would not be that effective because I wouldn't have spent the dice yet. Do you have to resolve? All right, so I really want to... I really want to be able to roll all the dice, but I don't think... That's a good idea. I think I need to keep one in reserve. Um, all right, so I will hold back. I will hold back the red convert die. If he doesn't lose that, he can use it to help out Monica. Uh, meanwhile, Monica is going to assist with, um, doesn't really matter, um, uh, other than that, I do have the capability to reroll red dice, um, so, sure, she'll assist with that. All right, we'll do hers first. Let's go to the close-up. All right, so that's one of the positive results we need. Okay, so let's go through what's happened here. Um, that was Monica's. All right, we did not hit on the injury die, so that's good. All right, so... Uh, this is going to move us one. I think I am going to go ahead and re-roll, spend a card to re-roll that die. All right. So now we've got three successes. Uh, so this accident, or this, sorry, this, uh, ah, so do we want to use this die... I don't think we need the two more alien technically. Well, or I could, yeah. Uh, I could advance that track or I could just spend it to gain a mineral lead, but that track is about to go away. So yeah, I think I will just I will just spend that red die to advance the top track one step and the other three dice are going to advance the bottom track three of the five steps we need to go. So those all are spent. That is spent. Uh, that was Boris's first action. Um, 
I think for a second action, he is just going to prepare and draw a card. Reroll a blue. So that's it for him. Now we're going to draw an event. All right, it is potentially a suit fracture, but it is not. Time passes. All right, we're going to have to replace this with card G02. As we expected, we were better off with the previous global event, and uh, it had been my intention to move it back a couple steps if we made it back to Nicole's turn. We didn't, so now we have uh, Gamma Flashes. Um, the crystalline structure begins to emit sudden gamma flashes. Should we take shelter? So now any dice check, if we get two accident results, that's going to be bad. We're going to have to roll the danger die. Uh, traveling now, we're going to have to roll, do a dice check with a red or a blue die to move to a connected sector. And uh, if we don't, we have to spend two dice. So... Um, yeah, that doesn't seem that bad. Uh, we just don't get the free freebie rolls, but that's probably for the better since people start getting wounded. So that goes on to the global event. Uh, that completes Boris's turn. We now go to Monica's turn, where we still need to hit this two more times. So Boris is going to assist with his red basic die. Um, if I get lucky, uh, I don't even have to get that lucky. She, uh, yeah, she's got the conversion gathering. I might be able to get those alien tech leads, which would be helpful to be able to use one of those other ones during our planetary exploration. So we're going to go all in on this one. Uh, hopefully that's not a mistake. All right. So far, so good. Now rolling hers. And I just realized there is a danger die, which, so I got to backtrack. Um, all right, well, I like that roll. Uh, we forgot to roll the danger die for when Boris did this. So uh, three, nothing. I assume that's A. Let's double check. Yep. Uh, so now the danger die for Nicole is, oof. Um, all right, so good. I've got safe path. Uh, Reroll one danger die rolled by any crew member in your sector. And that just doesn't have to be, it can be any time. doesn't have to be during a dice check. Uh, cards that can, I mean, this is a dice check, so six and one half. But if there were, uh, you know, if she were moving along a path. Yeah, technically, if you're, if you're doing it, if you're rolling dice to move along a path, you are still in a sector. Uh, the one you originated in. So either way, I'm going to spend that card. I'm going to re-roll this. Hopefully not get wounded. Yeah, we just... Yeah, I was not thinking. So... Um, forgot about that. I do have to spend a die. Um... All right. I am going to have to spend a die... To, as a result of that, uh, if I can't spend a die, then I am going to have to sacrifice one. So that being the case, um, I am going to have to go ahead and exert. These dice are not yet in my spent pool, so I have to exert one of these dice. Uh, I'll just exert the green generic from her as well. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm only getting two dice back instead of five. So that was inefficient. The good news is I nailed my roll. Uh, I got um, I got the two red basics, which can be converted to gathering to move that. And then the other two dice are spent to move the bottom track. So I do manage to complete both tracks. Um, and just make sure everybody gets their correct dice back. Oh, one of these red dice, right, came from Boris. Okay. Uh, so, first up, I am going to, moving bottom to top, gain two alien. 
Huh. Yeah, I was not paying attention. Uh, so you know, today's strategy tip is read the card. Pay attention to everything that happens. Uh, I did not have to roll. I could have kept the dice back because I gained two alien tech leads and advanced the green track one space. So I actually did not need to roll four dice. I only needed three dice. If I had done that, I would have been in a much better position. You know, when this came up, I would have just spent the extra. So got a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, it cost me some dice. Sail of but we do get the two alien tech leads. Um, you know what? And let's see. I'll draw them first. Okay. Um, I could use her charge, but um, I feel like that's just getting greedy at this point. I'm going to leave open the possibility that uh, I can still can still gain two more supplies if I need to. So uh, I will put the two on first, uh, which is going to, once this gets up to a total of three, it's actually at four, but the excess is lost. Um, all right, these are gonna be removed. These are gonna go back into the bag. I'm gonna draw a discovery and then pop this in its place. Uh, ultra rare alien tech. Once you gain this discovery, you may flip an incomplete rank up card to the completed side. Uh, I mean, so yay, my rank up is complete. If I wanted to spend multiple discoveries, I could. Um, this is a much more impressive and cooler card to get when you have a seemingly impossible rank up. But I won't complain. We do now have six discoveries, which means. Uh, we can use one of these. Uh, we can use, we could even use both of them if we need to, um, if we really get in a pinch. But uh, one gives us, uh, you can spend it to give us a Vanguard, the other a red plus a blue. Um, so that's available to us. We'll keep that in mind. Uh, we now go to log 22. Vanguard, we are close to the signal source. Proceed with caution, away team. Our advisors have several conflicting opinions as to what this thing may be. Some insist it is a trap made to... We've got it. It's a... satellite? Any ideas, Vanguard? It could have fallen from the sky. No, it's buried too deep. It seems the end of this planet was rather... Explosive. This piece of the crust must have impacted the satellite in the wake of the explosion. Good find, away team. Grab what you can and continue the mission. Okay. Gain an alien tech discovery. Uh, okay. So uh, you see another interesting place in the air. Remove this card from the game and place it with another P113. So we're going to have to work our way probably through all three of these at this point. Um, all right. So... Gain an alien tech discovery. Anytime you gain a uh, discovery, whether it's you know from drawing tokens from the lead bag or a situation like this, you do discard all tokens on the deck first. So this zero with the refresh is going to get shuffled back in. If I had had you know two value worth sitting on there, they're they're gone. Um, all right. Uh, alien tech discovery is fractured casing. Its origin, its original function remains a mystery. It's just generic. But now we've got seven discoveries. So uh, we have an embarrassment of riches over here. Um, all right. So let us get our new point of interest out. Okay. Strip mines. Wide swaths of the planet's surface are covered with strip mines overshadowed by the hulking, enormous machines. All right, we are going to have to scout the mines. Um, we can potentially gain three mineral leads and then move on to log number nine. All right, um, that was the first action for Monica. 
I think, yeah, she is not in a position to exert. She's already had to lose one die. Uh, that was suboptimal. She's going to exert. Not exert, sorry. She's going to rest. So we got one token left. She's going to get three dice back. Okay. Um, that is going to be the end of her turn. Event time. All right. There is an avalanche. Oof. Okay. Uh, we have a choice. We can sacrifice a die. Don't really want to do that again. Or each crew member in your sector, including you, rolls danger die A, then gain one mineral lead. We're going to go ahead and do that. So starting with her. Ugh. All right. This mission is starting to go sideways. She is wounded. Don't believe there's anything I can do about that at this point. Um, okay, there's her wound. And now Boris uh, tries to dive to push her out of the way. Unfortunately, stumbling over his own injury is not able to get there in time. Uh, and oh, goodness. Um, all right, so that's not terrible because all of his dice are spent. So this is exactly the situation I was talking about where he has to spend a die. He has none. So what he's going to do is sacrifice a die, and I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to sacrifice this. Well, no, I'm not going to sacrifice the blue die because I could potentially... Actually, okay. So I think what I'm going to do instead is... Um, hmm. Yeah, I suppose if I get really desperate, I could go back and get the three more supplies. I have an opportunity here. No, I still want to leave my options open. What I was thinking is I could spend his charge to refresh all dice, all his blue dice, and then he could just spend one of those. Um, I mean... I am due for, um, I, I am due to get, there, there's, there's two tokens in here that give you more charges. So, you know what, let me, let me, let me do that. I will spend his charge to do these three dice, um, and then he'll spend the wrench as a result of that untimely avalanche. Um, then we move on to Camille's turn. Uh, which is going to be considerably less exciting uh, since there is nothing going on here. Um, he is going to use the last supply to rest because he gets the most benefit out of it. Spending a charge, he will get all four of his dice back. Uh, he will then use his second action to head up. Um... Rolling a blue die, which is an accident, but it's not two accidents, so that's okay. Uh, move to a connected sector, so he does. Uh, and then draw an event, which is just going to be time passes. There are no symbols here. Uh, no oxygen leak. Glad for that. Uh, that's our first advancement here. That brings us to the end of the round. So time for me to take stock of where we're at and decide who's going to go first in this next round. Okay, so Monica is certainly the best equipped person right now to deal with the strip mines since uh, all we need is a uh, combat and a gathering or a red and a blue. So she's got combat. She's got the convert of gathering. Um, 
I'm actually going to have Boris assist. I don't really want him... Oh, she's got to do it too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much I want him doing dice checks. He's still got six dice. He's still got the ability to spend a charge. I know I already did that. Um, but he can still exert. Either way, uh, let her keep a little bit mo more of her dice. Um, so... She's so we'll start with Boris's assistance. All right, then we will do her dice. Okay. Uh, all right, nothing bad. Um, on that, so just drop that back over here. Um, all right, we did not manage to get the three mineral leads unless, yeah, I think it's worth it because we really want to get that other charge. So, um, Boris has the ability to re-roll a red die, so we're going to re-roll the combat die. There we go, Vanguard symbol, so that counts for the combat. That converts. Let me see if there's... Um, yeah, nothing really useful here. To, it's just kind of looking at her uh, cards to see if I wanted to do any dice check abilities, but no. So... Um, that blue die just gets wasted, but we wanted the insurance to make sure. So we are going to gain our three mineral leads. Um, sorry, that blue die came from Boris. These go here. All right, gain three mineral leads. Come on, let's get that plus one charge. There we go. All right. Did not give us much progress towards that, but I do get plus one charge. And again, it can go to anybody, so I choose to give it to Boris. So now everybody's got exactly one charge. We are in a position to be able to get those extra supplies if need be. Um, okay, so that was actually her... Oh, we're, we're not done yet. Yeah, we got to go to log nine. Let's not forget to see what happens. Look at this. What were they digging for? Lime. The walls and piles contain mostly calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide. I guess they were making concrete. Enough concrete to fill a small sea. All right. Oh, so this is different. We're not going to do the other 113. We're going to get POI in Sector 6. Oh, no, Sector 6. Okay, with card 116, replace... All right, so let's... And then we're going to replace Mission Card M21 with M22. Uh, we've discovered another exciting area. Remove this card from the game and replace it with another random P113. Okay, so a whole bunch of stuff happening. Let me get all that in place. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to replace up here, the medical wing, uh, it was ability to gain a live specimen discovery, uh, go to log 32, uh, so we'll have to see if we decide we want to do this. Uh, we do have to have, <laughs> here's uh, where I talked about the danger, this is the first time we've seen need of defense, you have to have a defense in your roll pool or else you're going to gain an exhausted injury. Uh, and those suck. So this is pretty complicated, uh, but if we really want to do it, there are certainly ways of making it happen. It's actually not that hard at all. Um, so we'll have to think about that. Um, next up, uh, down in 116, we have the Doomsday Sphere. Uh, let me read this. Protected from seismic movements by an intricate system of giant springs and pistons shielded with a thick shell of super hard alloy, the sphere must house something important. So, 
In order to open the sphere, we are going to need combat, gathering, and I believe that's construction. That is, hey, finally use for construction. Glad I did not get rid of that die. Um, and we're going to have to do that five times. Uh, accidents are bad. And we, oh, look at that. They're already situated. Uh, the final effort, wherever we go, this is our new mission, wherever we go, we see signs of the massive construction effort this civilization undertook in its final weeks. But what were they building and where? The roads and transport systems point to an area not far from here. Objective, find and unlock the doomsday sphere. Okay. So let's drop that down. And that was all part of... Uh, Monica's first action. So let me take a moment to think about what I'm going to have her do for her second action. Okay, so there are a lot of considerations here. Uh, let me walk you through my thought process, and I can genuinely say I don't remember. Uh, I don't even know if I've uh, if the last time I did this, uh, I encountered this particular card. But we've cleared through two of these, uh, two of the three cards that could potentially show up here. And in both cases of the other two, we didn't gain any successes. You know, we, by doing the better ability, we, we got stuff towards discoveries and leads out of it, but there were no success involved. It just led to the other one. Uh, so my feeling is this one seems pretty risky. Uh, I don't have the defense die. I don't really want to expend the resources to get Camille up here. He's where he needs to be at the Doomsday Sphere. So I don't need the live specimen discovery. I've got seven discoveries. Two of them I'm going to burn off anyway. So it just doesn't seem worth it. Her making a dice check, which I wouldn't even be able to do this turn because she's already taken her action. I'm good. I'm not going to bother trying completing this. If I thought there were a pretty good shot I could get a success token out of it, I might think otherwise. But since neither of the other two gave success, I don't think this will either. Uh, and if it does, whatever. I lost the success token. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. So instead, I'm going to get her out of here. I'm going to move her down to the Doomsday Sphere where she can help out the others both with cards and with dice and. I was looking, deciding what die to keep. I think uh, in this case, she's got a blue die, which Nicholas, uh, if she assists Nicholas on his turn, he can convert to one of the symbols we need to open the sphere. So she's going to spend her two green dice to move down. I can't even use her jetpack. I had, wasn't even thinking about that. If I had a red die, I could do that. But I don't. So she spends the two green dice. She moves down here. It's not a dice check, so I don't have to roll the injury die. I kind of want to limit the amount of dice checks that my injured people have to make anyway at this point. Uh, so that was her second action. Now, oops, now she is going to draw an event. Uh, we have ruins and caves here. Uh, there is a cooling malfunction, but there isn't. So this just advances to space number two. That's the end of her turn. Now it is Camille's turn. And yeah, he's going to get to work on this. Maybe. Well, let's see. Um, all right. Accidents are bad. They make us resolve events. Uh, Camille currently doesn't have any cards. Doesn't need to rest. And I'm not going to have him roll a ton of dice. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use his first action to prepare. Okay, so now I can really roll green dice. Um, all right. Uh, well, definitely he's going to roll that die. Does anybody else have anything useful? Um we have to get a whole mess of successes here. All right, so what I'm kind of looking at is on Nicholas's turn, he's going to be able to potentially do a lot on this in terms of getting loaned dice 
because anybody who can give him a blue die, a blue basic die, is going to help our chances here. Um, so now I'm looking at Boris, thinking, boy, Boris, and I'd rather Boris not be making a dice check. Boris has this gathering die. So at this point, now seems like, oh, and also has, actually, Boris has a lot of good dice for this. But he can assist everybody else. So I think now is the time for Boris to exert. So um, I am shorting myself one die, but that's okay. Um, it makes him immediately useful in this check. So uh, he will then loan the mining die. Uh, not sure anybody else has anything useful to offer on this check. Uh, well, we have to get, let's see, in order to get the bad result, we'd have to get three accidents. Uh, we have plenty of rerolls, so I think Camille will also roll a Vanguard die. You can see what I'm not doing here is I'm not rolling dice of other symbols. Looking for that one in six Vanguard shot. It's not worth it. I have too many people here, too many things to do. I'm not going to do it in one shot. That's fine. Let me roll dice that are going to give me the symbols I need. We're not in desperation mode. Um, okay. So that being said, let's see what Boris can do to help figure this doomsday sphere out. Uh, not a lot uh, for the moment. Camille, how about you? Looking a lot better. There's a couple vanguards. So, uh, what do we want to do about this accident? <laughs> Turns out we're not going to do anything about the accident because Boris isn't here. Uh, he's actually one space away. I got so excited on the idea that everybody was here to help. Um, so, I'm just going to take the die back. I'm not going to undo the exertion. I think he probably would have done that anyway. So, no help from Boris. Uh, Camille was just doing this one on his own. Uh, so, apologies for that. Uh, it's actually pretty late here. But um, let's power through. I think we're getting pretty close to the end. Two vanguards is still a very good result. That gets us two on the track. We only need three more. Hopefully, Nicholas can pound that out. Um, that was... Um, that was two actions for Camille. Um, or that was his first action. I think I meant to have him prepare for his other action, or I did. I can't remember. I'm not going to rewind. Like I said, it's getting late. Let me just try and be more careful. I'm just going to go ahead. If he did have another action, I'm not going to use it. Um, all right. Ambush. There is not an ambush here at the Doomsday Sphere. So once again, time tracks advance. Let's pass this over to Nicholas. All right, so let's get him these three dice. Uh, he can convert blue, so Monaco will assist. Hopefully that should be enough. Let's start with Monica's help. It's a vanguard. That is very helpful. And now for Nicholas's three dice. And you know what? Hmm. I just realized it doesn't seem much downside to this. He can use the portable AI. Uh, might as well have him also roll this die. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, it's a 1 in 6 chance of Vanguard's a 1 in 6, six chance of an accident, but we need 3 accidents, and if we get 3 accidents, we're going to be re-rolling a lot of dice anyway. So we're going to take advantage of the portable AI, roll from the spent pool... All right, what do we got? Uh, this blue die is going to be a success. Um, I'm not even sure why I rolled this red die. Or what I was looking for. Um, hmm. Uh, 
Okay. Well, either way. Um, yeah, I'm definitely making mistakes now. Okay. So uh, we've got two successes. We need one more. Um, it's probably worth the 50-50 shot on the Vanguard die. To just... You know what? I'm not even going to mess around. Now that I remember it, we're going to go over here. We've got our Alien Tech Discoveries. Uh, this one can add a construction icon to the die pool. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and discard this functional nano dust to give us the last success we need just throw that up there so we are done we go to log 240 let me get all these dice back where they belong um okay Captain's log, entry D-427. To the unknown creatures from the distant past in this distant world, I salute you. When our team finally began to crack the dome's inner layer, we expected a myriad of things. An ark, an archive, a vault, created by the people of this world to carry their legacy beyond the apocalypse. Yet again, we were wrong. Inside, encased in protective carbon nanofoam, was an object as old as this planet. A steely that predated this civilization by millions of years. With her last dying effort, these creatures protected an artifact from an even older time, as resigned to the thought that all their history and culture, and even their very lives, were less important than this one cracked relic. I keep wondering whether humans would be capable of such sacrifice. The object they saved for us bears a clear resemblance to the architecture of the Eye of the Void. There's no doubt the builders who created the Eye and our star map also left this stone as they spread life to this planet. What does it mean for us? Are there other steelies like this on other planets? Was there one on Earth? The sides of the stele contain code we have yet to unravel. But atop it, we found one large symbol, alien yet familiar. A glyph that seems to symbolize uplifting, raising up, with several small dots scattered at its base. This last piece of the puzzle helped us understand some strange discoveries on this planet. The first evolved species here uplifted many other species through genetic engineering and bionic modifications, something that would never cross the minds of humans back on Earth. We will have plenty of time to ponder this and to study the steely on our journey to the next world. Let us hope this time we find more than just ashes. Okay, we have completed the mission. Uh, we're going to get a research project, a builder's landmark, an objective. Uh, on many planets, you must return to your lander after fulfilling your objective. Here, simply place all your crew member back in the lander sector. Convenient. Uh, remove the landing card L1 from the scanner, then remove it from the game. Another landing on this planet is not possible. If there are any unique discoveries left on the planet, we got them all. Discard one success if you have any and gain those discoveries now. Important, each unique discovery can only be found. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. So, that's it. We have done it. We are back in the lander sector. Uh, there is, hmm, there is a liftoff, there's a liftoff log entry for this. <laughs> so yeah, if you go to 29 in the app, uh, you may not terminate this introductory mission before you reach your objective. So we don't even have to bother with that.
so that does it. Uh, we have completed uh, Pellucid. Uh, fortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to come back to this planet, uh, but it also seems like we found just about everything there is to find, uh, say the exploring the medical wing. Uh, we got five successes, which uh, plus the one we already had, uh, would bring us... Oh, no, we didn't already have one. So we're actually one short of getting a new die. That's unfortunate. Um, except I just remembered that uh, we actually... One of our alien tech... One of our tech discoveries does give us a success. We are actually... That's still going to be too late. <laughs> so, all right. So we're not going to be able to get new dice right away, but we'll be in a good position next time. Uh couple injuries overall uh, i got a little bleary eyed towards the end made a couple mistakes but uh nothing catastrophic so again hope you enjoyed that uh, i may well have missed other things uh, i'm gonna go back i'm gonna watch the video i'll add subtitles uh in klingon uh Thanks to Rado for uh, that idea. I don't know if he got it from somebody else, but that's where I've seen it from. So any mistakes I made, we'll put it in the Klingon subtitles, and we will pick up the next session with the shipbook phase. Again, thanks for watching. Comments uh, are welcome. Until next time.